become the Archmage of the Mages Guild by getting experience in nothing but mysticism. The insidious thing here is that means we can't run or jump, otherwise we'd get XP in athletics and acrobatics. The only skill we can't prevent getting XP in is unarmored, but by the magic of cheating, we can just reset that to 10 every time it levels up. Just don't get hit. Reset every time you take damage. Listen, I ain't small ant, I'm not doing that. So now that that's all laid out and we all know what's happening, let's get into it. Becoming the Archmage with only mysticism. Because Marwyn's faction system has strict skill requirements for advancement, we need to be careful with how we build our character at the start. Most importantly is the name, Miss Tick. So to become Archmage, we must first reach the rank of Master Wizard, requiring one of the Mages Guild's favorite skills at level 80 and two at level 30. And then once we get this rank, we'll be able to do the quest to become Archmage. By starting as a High Elf, we'll begin the game with a sizable boost to several of the Mages Guild's favorite skills, and by picking Magic as our specialization and all the Magic skills as Majors and Minors, except on Armored, we'll have the secondary skill requirements for the Mages Guild sorted before we even leave the Census and Excise office. This means, to rank up in the Mages Guild, we won't have to train anything but Mysticism. I will be resetting my Unarmored skill to 10 each time it levels, but I don't want it to influence my overall level, which is why I'm leaving it as a miscellaneous skill. I also won't be allocating any skill points to speed, effectively negating any benefit the unarmored skill could give me. For extra magicka, we'll be going with the Atronach sign. Not only does it give us a 50% chance to absorb spells cast on us, replenishing our magicka, but it also adds magicka equal to twice our intelligence. We're starting out with a whopping 270 magicka. The only drawback is that our magicka doesn't replenish naturally, so we're going to have to drink potions or restore it by getting hit by spells or at altars. We'll talk about that later. Why a female high elf? Because they have 40 speed instead of 30 like their male counterparts. In exchange, female high elves have 30 endurance rather than 40. A worthwhile trade-off if you ask me. As a haughty high elf noblewoman who happened to get mixed up with the custom officials while traveling through the Nibine Bay in Cyrodiil, it's far beneath us to run or jump. Okay, I'm not going to do this roleplay thing. So we're going to return Fargot's ring because we're not going to need it, and we're going to saunter over to the nearest tree in Sedanine, not running or jumping, to collect a bit of Bungler's Bane and Haifa Fascia. Miss Tick may not be native to these lands, but she's well-read and understands the value of these fungi. Near the Silt Strider are a couple patches of Luminous Rusula and Violet Copernus, more mushrooms that might come in handy. As soon as we arrive in Balmora, we ransack the many crates and urns lying around the city for dinnerware and alchemy supplies. It's inexpensive loot, but there's always a chance of finding a valuable enchanted item, so it's worth checking out. There are several spells we need to buy before before we head out into the world, so we need all the gold we can get. After joining the Mages Guild and looting their supply chest, I immediately sell all the scrolls, books, and soul gems to Galvadir because I won't be needing them. We're going to do the same with all the other Guild Hall supplies, but first let's have a chat with Ajira and help her out a bit. See, I picked up those mushrooms for a reason. She needs us to help her with her alchemical research by finding a few samples, exactly those I gathered in Sedanine. The next thing she wants us to do is help her sabotage Galvadir. Ajira and Galvadir made a bet on who would become a journeyman mage first, and to slow Galvadir down, we need to place a fake soul gem in her desk drawer. When Galvadir uses the fake soul gem to enchant something, it'll make her, I don't know, piss herself or something. I, I might be confusing that with warm water during a sleepover. The quest lures Galvadir away from her desk, so while we place the fake gem in the drawer, we can steal all her other gems, most of which are super valuable. It might actually be tough to find a vendor worth selling the more expensive ones to, but that's fine. The spells we need aren't that expensive. And, and yeah, I, I could go to the mud crab merchant or creeper or whatever, but that's kind of overpowered. We're not going to... We're not going to use them. From Aramian in the Caldera Mages Guild, I'll buy the spell Recall. I thought he also sold Mark, but it's actually Serolanwi and Vivek who sells both. I'll need to visit a temple anyway to get the Elm Civi Intervention spell, so I'll grab Mark when I get back to Belmora. Divine Intervention is sold by Imperial Cult spell vendors, and there's a conveniently placed Imperial Temple just downstairs from the Sardrath Mora Mages Guild. The less traveling I need to do, the better, because walking is... It is slow. It is so slow. Onius Atras doesn't only sell Divine Intervention, however. He also sells Absorb Health, and this will be our primary method of attacking. Not only does it transfer enemy health to me, healing me, but it also isn't a death sentence if it gets reflected. The last thing a High Elf wants is a powerful fireball to be sent right back in their face. What with the elemental weaknesses and all, absorption from the Atronach sign can only do so much. The version of the spell Onius sells is 5 to 52 points for one second on touch. It's pretty strong. But sometimes you want to cast a spell at a distance, so I'm making a custom absorb spell. 1 to 30 points for 1 second within 1 foot of the target. Absorb health, but at a distance. What it loses in strength it makes up for in range. Ajira does have more tasks for us, but we'll get back to her later. Right now, we're going to get some duties from Edwina Elbert. I've done her first few quests so many times since the reward is really convenient for non-restricted runs, so I could probably do them with my eyes closed. I'm, I'm not gonna, but I could. Well... 
I probably actually couldn't, but I'm, I'm well... First, she wants a copy of Chronicles of Nuchuleft. There are plenty of places where we can find this book, Nuchuleft being one of them, but the easiest source is the bookstore just outside the Belmore Mages Guild. Edwina even gives you 250 coins to cover some of the costs. But before leaving Alderaan, I need to learn telekinesis. Like all the other spells I've been buying, it's in the School of Mysticism, and we'll need it for basically one singular purpose. Well, two, I guess. The second is disarming traps, but you don't need telekinesis for that. You can just eat the damage from the trap. So eh. the first purpose will come up later. A lot of this stuff is build up. We'll don't worry. Dorcia Darvel sells the Chronicles of Nuchuleft. It's an exclusive bookshop, impossible to get a reservation. Oh, wait. Oh, her name is Dorisa, not Dorcia. Well, I need new clothes. Eh, not great, but guess it's better than the rough spun I was wearing. Over at the Belmora Temple from the two basement wizards, I'm going to buy both Omsivi um, Intervention and Mark to make getting to and from places much, much faster. It's even faster to teleport from the spell merchants right here to the front of the temple than it is to walk up the stairs. Walking is very slow. Now I need a way to train mysticism. All spells, regardless of their power or cost, grant the same amount of experience when successfully cast, so the most optimal thing to do is to create a custom spell with a high cast chance and a magicka cost of 1. Telekinesis 13 feet for 2 seconds on self is the strongest telekinesis spell I could make without costing more than 1 magicka. Not only will it be good for training, but it might have some utility down the line. Let's do Ajira's next task since we're here, before returning to Edwina. She needs some flowers, gold canet, stone flower petals, willow anther, and heather. She actually sells Willow Anther and Heather, so we could just buy those straight from her. There are vendors that sell the other flowers, but I want to train up my mysticism, so let's go for a walk. Go for a walk in the countryside, see the sights. Divine Intervention takes me to Fort Moonmoth, and by following the path out of the fort, obstructing my view with purple particles aplenty. I can find a helping of Gold Cannon and Heather, ironically. Where the hell is the stone flower? Ajira says it's near the lake, but the lake is massive. What qualifies as a near the lake? So I walked all the way from Moonmoth to Pelagiad, Pelagiad, casting my weak telekinesis spell along the way, and I didn't find a single stone flower plant. Good thing I have magic potions on me because I actually realized there is a vendor that sells all the petals that's really easy to get to. Recall back to the Belmore Mages Guild, where I left my mark, then teleport to the temple. First of all, praying at a shrine can restore your magicka if you took the Atronach sign. Either I'm Civi Restoration at a Tribunal Shrine or Restore Attributes at an Imperial Shrine. The shrines basically cast a bunch of spells at you, and you absorb some of them, replenishing your magicka. At least that's what I've been led to believe by the internet, and they've never lied to me before. Anyway, Lathinu Hlalu sells the petals, the spell merchant I bought um, Civi Intervention from. I guess if I bought these the first time I came here, I wouldn't have been able to train on my walk, so it wasn't a total waste of time. In fact, I can ascend to level 2. 5 points to willpower, unsurprising, since I only got mysticism levels, 1 to luck, and 1 to intelligence. After giving Ajira the flowers, she asks us to get her a ceramic bowl. Why? Not sure, but I'm not one to ask questions. Well, that's a lie. I'm constantly confused by things. It's a blessing that breathing is involuntary. If I were a more arrogant person, all the mistakes I've been making in these last few videos would really be doing a number on my mental health. And no, it's not engagement bait. That said, if I do make a mistake, feel free to correct me. I'm totally fine with that. Anyway, Revere sells a random assortment of junk, including ceramic bowls. Although I shouldn't call it junk. His demonic weapons come with a conjure weapon enchantment, which conjures daedric weapon equivalents. And they're reasonably priced. Everything else is pretty much garbage, though. Returning with the bull, Ajira immediately sends us off on her next quest because her research notes have gone missing. Oh, the dastardly Galbadir must have stolen them while I was out purchasing a critical piece of equipment for Ajira's studies. Ajira was still in the guild, though, so I don't know how Galbadir managed to swipe the notes. Why didn't Ajira just keep an eye on them? Is she stupid? Galbadir didn't hide the notes all that well, though. One set of notes is under this wardrobe, the other is among the ingredients near the supply chest. You'd think she'd have found them on her own if she was actually working with alchemy stuff, but it seems like she can't get alchemy ingredients herself so she wouldn't have even gone there to find it. Maybe she is stupid. Kinda ironic since all three skills that she can train are governed by intelligence. After returning the notes to Ajira, she tells us to return to her when we've achieved the rank of Warlock for more duties. She also tells us that Rannis Athrin might have some tasks for us instead. We need to officially rank up in the guild from Associate to Apprentice to Journeyman and finally to Evoker. That's right, we've become a Drakthir. Although we do meet these skill requirements to be a Conjurer, we still need to complete more duties and gain more reputation with the guild. Rannis gives us two tasks, to get Lorar Bereloth, an ex-Telvani mage, to join the guild, and to collect Manwe's guild dues. The former is in Sulipund, 
The latter is in Punabi, both of which are on a road heading northeast from Mirandus. Mirandus is one of the 10 Dunner strongholds containing a propylon chamber, and if you have the stronghold's respective propylon index, you can teleport to it from an adjacent stronghold. Unless you have all 10, then you get the master propylon index with the plug-in, and then you can just teleport to all of them from foams in the Calderme. We're not worrying about that this time around. But what I should have done was get the Mirandus index from the St. Ohms Canton in Vivec, and the Hlormoran Index from Urgola in Caldera, then traveled west to Hlormoran from Balmora and teleported to Mirandus. That probably would have been faster than just walking east-ish from Saran, but without being able to jump, I suspect navigating Vivek would take a while. I'm stuck. Gotta reload. Something I need to be oof, careful about is taking fall damage. Jumping grants acrobatics XP. I actually bound jump to the other side of my keyboard so I don't accidentally press it. But taking damage from falls also grants XP. If I fall from too high of a height, I'll need to reload a save. How high is too high of a fall? Not sure. But I know if I find out, I'll probably lose a bunch of progress as a result. The less dropping from heights, the better. And on your left, you'll see Mirandas. And on your right, rocks. I've been casting spells this whole time and got 55 mysticism, another level up, 5 to willpower of course, and 1 to intelligence and luck. If I'm honest, it'd probably be better to put points into strength or endurance instead of intelligence. A little bit of extra magic is nice and all, but even as a high elf with the Atronach birth sign, one point of intelligence is only like 5 magicka. More carry weight and health probably would have been better. Oh well. Finally, we made it to Punabi. Manwe owes the guild 2,000 septums. If we could persuade her, it wouldn't be so difficult to get her to pay up, but she won't budge. She tells us to pay if it's so important. Tavani Bug Musk might have been a smart thing to bring now that I think of it. Maybe there's something deeper in the cave that'll help. A scamp? A lady? I'm taking her robes. How does it feel to know death? A fire atronach. Right, 50% fire weakness. That was an ordeal. Another lady. I'm gonna take her robes instead. Some good loot here. That scroll of greater domination will sell for a bit. A book that teaches mysticism. Cool, cool. Wow, this urn's loaded with good scr- Aww. Scroll of Windform. Man, I wish I could use that. I know using scrolls doesn't grant XP, but that seems against the spirit of the challenge, you know? Okay, so I couldn't find anything to help me out deeper in the cave. Maybe she's just holding on to her dues, and if I kill her, I could bring them back to Rannis. See, that's the tough thing with touch spells when you can't run. Enemies zip out of range quite easily. Uh. 203 gold. Not quite what I was hoping for, but it'll have to do. Sulapund is just up the road, and I gotta say, these Dunmer bases, the ones of this style, I'm not exactly sure what you'd call them. They're not strongholds, and they're not really fortresses. I guess they're just houses? Whatever they are. They look super cozy. I think I just really like the idea of a house built into a hillside. I wouldn't mind being a hobbit. So Lorar isn't going to join the guild. His disposition starts painfully low. Even with speechcraft or bug musk, it probably wouldn't do much to convince him. As is the way the Telvani, the dude's got to die. <clears throat> we can't let anyone sell magic services without the sanction of the Mage's Guild? Is is that why I killed him? Are, is the Mage's Guild a gang? Killing Monway will serve as a lesson to others? By Shore's beard, we are a gang. Well... Whose legs I gotta break next? An Argonian at the Southwall Corner Club is offering unsanctioned training, so we gotta have a word with him. Although we won't be using his services, he does offer them to us if we lie to Rannis and pretend he agreed to stop the unsanctioned training. This corner club is too nice to dirty up with corpses, so I'll do him a solid. Rannis, I spoke with the Argonian and demanded he stop. Have I taken care of him? Um, yeah. By variable definitions of taken care of, absolutely. Next, Rannis wants us to get notes from a high elf named Atiramel. Atiramel needs an escort to Pelagiad from the Eight Plates Inn in Balmora, and he'll hand over the notes if we get him there safely. 
but escort quests suck, so let's just lead him outside of Balmora, out of view of the guards, this should be good, and absorb his health. Please be careful. Okay, he's not aggro on me. Your side. Neat. I guess it would be pretty awful if spells made your followers instantly attack you, so there must be a safeguard that prevents the first X spells from triggering aggression. In this case, it was more spells than was needed to kill him. Good thing too, because he can carry some pretty powerful scrolls. That elemental burst shock spell? That would have one-shot me without question. Unless I absorbed it, but that's only a 50-50 chance. Let's sell these scrolls to Galbadir for a couple thousand septums, and then return to Rannis. Our next duty from her is dealing with Tashpi Ashabel in Margan, who has allegedly been practicing necromancy. This is a big no-no in Morrowind unless you bend over backwards to justify it. Personally, I like RuneScape's recent take on necromancy. True necromantic prowess is achieved through the power of friendship. I'm not even kidding. Forcing spirits to do your bidding isn't as effective as just asking them to help you. Let's make a new absorb spell before we leave from Argon. My mysticism level is a bit higher than before, so I think we can manage something a bit stronger. 10 to 30 points for 2 seconds with a 3 foot area on target. It costs 36 magicka, but it'll do between 20 and 60 damage, an average of 40 damage. So it's a bit more than 1 point of damage per magicka spent. The other targeted spell costs 18 magicka and only does 15 points of damage on average, less than 1 point of damage per magicka. The 5 to 52 points on touch is still technically more damage per magicka though, but it has to be on touch. Because of the extra range, targeted spells end up costing a bit more. On to Margon. It turns out Tashpi isn't actually a necromancer. Rannis is upset because Tashpi refused to join the Mages Guild and instead chose to practice healing among her people. She asks us to tell Rannis that she's dead and she'll head off to the mainland to practice her medicine there. Why not? If Rannis wants me to be a hitman, she's gonna have to pay better. There's a Telvani spy in the guild and we gotta figure out who it is. Among Us meme, etc. If we ask Archmage Trebonius Artorius, Abysswalker Artorius? Coincidence. If we ask him about Terum Gadar, the Dunmer standing a few feet away from him, we learn that he came to Morrowind with the highest credentials. But when we read a copy of the credentials Drabonius gave us, it's clearly a forgery. Even Chancellor Arcado's name is spelled wrong. And on the back is a picture of a butt. And that's the last of Rannis' duties. If we had let Atiramel and Ishapal live, half of which we failed to do, we could have accused her of being the spy and forced her out of the guild. Regardless, we advanced to Conjurer by paying 200 septums as our guild dues, which I'm sure Rannis is just gonna pocket, and then we rank up once again to Magician. Next rank is Warlock, but we gotta do some duties first. So let's go do some duties. Edwina's probably been waiting long enough for this book. Remember? Chronicles of Nuchu left? Now she wants us to fetch a Detect Creatures potion from Skink in Tree's Shade in the Sadric Moor Mages Guild. I placed my mark in the hallway area between the Mages Guild teleporter and the stairs down to Edwina, so hopefully it should make going back and forth between places a bit quicker. Walking is so slow I have to optimize corridors. After retrieving and delivering the potion, Edwina now wants us to steal a book from Sirolanwi in Vivek. She's got herself a book, the Chimar Vimidium, and Edwina wants to have a read. She gives us scrolls of Undusi's Unhinging, and I can just unlock the chest and take the book. But there's gotta be another option, right? There's gotta be something I can do to get this book without having to use the scroll. So I went back to Serlanwi and used the Detect Key spell I bought from her. And lo and behold, she's got a key right there on her table. That key must surely open the chest containing the Chimmer's Jimbrambabam. Time to reload the game. Chronicles of Nichu left, Detect Creature's Potion, back to Serlanwi. After several minutes of failing to telekinetically grab the key without being detected, I realized that I needed a stronger telekinesis spell. 30 to 40 feet for 20 seconds should be enough. There's no direct line of sight from a hidden area in Sir Lanry's room unless you wedge yourself between the open closet door and the wall. You'll need to wriggle around a bit to line things up correctly so you're not stuck behind the decorative wall curtain, but once you find that sweet spot, you can use telekinesis and take the key. And this is why we needed a better telekinesis spell. Sir Lanry didn't notice a thing. Now we can take the book. I always question the usefulness of detect key, just pick the lock, idiot. But now I see it's real power. It doesn't just tell you where the key is, it also tells you if there's a key at all. Keys tend to blend into the surroundings, so they're easy to miss. Giving the book to Edwina, she thanks us and sends us off to Margan to check on a disturbance at Huleen's hut. When we get there, a scamp immediately attacks us, but it's no match for our absorbing touch. Makes all the scamps tremble. Yes. In that way. Also it dies. There's a naked guy locked in the basement, Huleen's apprentice. He tried summoning a scamp and it got out of hand. You know how it goes. Everything's cooled down now, so back to Edwina. She rewards us with some useless scrolls and a new task, returning the book we stole. 
It's easier this time because we don't need to steal the key again. In a normal run, the reward from this little chain of quests would be really useful. Two amulets enchanted with each of the intervention spells. Instant teleports that don't cost any magicka that any character can get since you can do these quests at the associate rank. But we can't use them during this run since that would give us a teeny tiny bit of enchanting XP. Next, she wants us to get a Dwemer tube and we can find some in Arking Thunch Sturdums, a Dwemer ruin if you couldn't tell. We'll get around to that eventually. But right now, I can advance to the Warlock rank, and I've done enough duties to advance again, but I don't satisfy their skill requirements. I need one skill at 70 and two at 25, so we need 70 mysticism. That's 65 mysticism, and we're now ready for another level up. Five to willpower, one to luck, one to intelligence. And notice I could get two points to speed. That's because my unarmored skill leveled up at some point over the course of this character level, but I use the console to reset it to 10. This is why I'm not allocating any speed attributes. We're keeping it at 40 as proof, I suppose. To break up the monotony of grinding up mysticism levels, let's return to Ajira. She said she'd have more duties for us once we reached Warlock rank, and we've passed that. There's a little quest she wants us to do, a simple little thing. In a cave northwest of Mulligmar is the friggin' Staff of Magnus. Is it THE Staff of Magnus? I think so. Let's go get it. These cantons are big. You never really realize it until you have to slowly wind your way down like a normal person instead of just jumping over the side. Okay, please don't take fall damage. Good. Into Asu. Oh, a Daedroth. That's unnerving. Well, at least he didn't one-shot me. Don't heal, you dick. Only I'm allowed to heal. Ooh. Oh, oh, Atronach Breath Sign. Thank you. Combat is rough when you can't jump. I never realized how much I took advantage of strafe hopping to keep myself from getting backed into a corner. Oh, hey, 70 mysticism. Fantastic. We can rank up when we get back to town. Now, here's a problem. Water. I can't swim because swimming would train athletics, but I need to cross the water to get the staff. Fortunately, I have levitation potions with me. We got a frost atronach and the mage summons a greater bone walker. And now I'm over encumbered and still floating in the air. How's this gonna work when the spell wears off? Now you die! All right, second try. I can kind of use this fire pit as a barrier to keep the bone walker away. Oh god, they're creepy. 11 unarmored. Let me show you what I've been doing every time that happens. You open the console, put in the little console command, and you just set unarmored to 10. Easy peasy. Just pretend I've, I've achieved amaranth and I'm the godhead. One last touch should do it. And she went soaring into the drink. The staff is on her corpse, isn't it? Yep. And I'm sure I got athletics experience from this little swim. God damn it. Reload. Atronach down, and I managed to not aggro the mage yet. If I spam absorb health fast enough, I should be able to outheal any damage Draveni and her Bonewalker do. Now we can take the staff without getting any athletics experience, but my strength is zero. Let's try this again. I need to be really careful. If I step too far back, the Bone Walker can drain my strength. But if I'm too far forward, Draveni will get launched into the water again. You will die! There we go. Something interesting I've noticed since making these Morrowind videos is how some characters have identical names. I'm sure most people, like myself, never really read the names when playing the game. They just sort of looked at them at a glance and gleaned the vibe from the name rather than phonetically sounding them out. So for me, the names never really stuck. Now that I have to actually speak them out loud, I'm noticing repeats. For instance, the woman who is holding the staff, her full name was Draveni Hlaren. One of the Redoran counselors is named Hlaren Remoran. Neat little thing. We return to Ajira, staff in hand, and she tells us about another of her secrets, the Warlock's Ring. There's someone with a fancy ring and a Shirbadon, a cave on the shore between Vivek and Molagmar. 
We'll get around to that a bit later. What I want to do right now is advance to the wizard rank. I'll just leave the Staff of Magnus here. I have a feeling someone will need it for something important at some point in the future, in like 200 years. Hopefully, an undead dragon priest doesn't get a hold of it in the meantime. Otherwise, the thing that is going to be needed for is going to be tough for whoever needs it. But I'm sure they'll figure it out. To become a wizard, we need a wizard staff. I, the Staff of Magnus ain't good enough. We can either buy the staff for 5,000 septums, or go all the way to Sud, west of Dagenfell, and kill Arnirn, a former Mages Guild member, and take her staff. I'm going to buy the staff. I only have about 6k, but I think it's worth it. The staff itself is useless, but I need it to advance, and I really don't want to walk all the way to Sud. To become a Master Wizard, we need to do more duties. And to get the quest to become Archmage, we need to do all of Edwina's duties. So we're off to Arking Thunsch Sturdums to find that Dwemer tube. What an ominous and significant looking Dwemer ruins. Oh, hello, little scrib. You know... I know later installments of the Elder Scrolls get criticized for being dumbed down compared to Morrowind, and I'm sure Daggerfall fans feel the same way about Morrowind, but man are dungeons bland. Fine, there's a realness to uninteresting dungeons with just a few Dwemer spiders in them, and Skyrim's dungeons do have a formulaic video gaminess to them, but it's a video game. Oh, there's the tube. Wow, exploring this dungeon was a real treat. I am so immersed. I'm sorry, I'm just being a little shit talker. These games are great. Except Oblivion. I'm just kidding. Next, Edwina wants us to swing by Nechulef Tinkth and pick up an excavation report from Senilius Cadiusus. You know, if you raise Hasfat Antibolus's disposition, you know, the guy you have to get the drummer puzzle cube for in the main quest, he'll actually give you a letter to take to Senilius, acting as a breadcrumb to this dungeon. Not relevant, but interesting. Well, not interesting, but it's a fact. Now I'm here in Vivek at the temple because I'd read something about a shrine that gives you a levitate buff for like half an hour. You just need to offer a levitate potion to it. I'd never heard of this shrine before recently, and since Nechulef Tinkth is in Molugmar, a bit of levitation could be useful for getting over the many mountains in the area. I just need levitate potions, and I need to find the actual shrine that gives me the levitate buff. Fortunately, you can buy levitate potions from an NPC in the Temple Canton, but for whatever reason, that vendor, Danso and Dules, doesn't like me. I guess being a high rank in the Mages Guild is antagonistic to the Temple, but I expect our disposition will improve if we actually join the Temple. But they all hate my guts. I couldn't even try speechcrafting them if I wanted to because they tell me to go away immediately. Here's what we'll do. We'll visit our favorite alchemist, Sian Sintiev, and buy some Telvani Bug Musk. It boosts our personality by 40, and that'll bump up our disposition just a little bit, hopefully enough to be able to join the temple. I'll buy several just in case. One is enough to get me into Danso's shop, and while the effects of the Bug Musk are still lingering, I'll join the temple. Endrin Lethen doesn't like us too much, but the Bug Musk seems to do the trick. Joining the temple launches my disposition with him from 38 to 79, so we shouldn't need any more Bug Musk to buy from Danso, if we ever need to. Now where's that shrine? Oh, it's outside. I never realized this was an actual shrine, and it's surrounded by coda flowers, an ingredient for levitate potions. Wow. Man, this would have been awesome to know about ages ago, and I don't just mean for this run. It's still pretty slow, all things considered, but it makes you getting over the water easier. I guess the drawback is that you can't rest while levitating, and this effect lasts for like 20 minutes. So you kind of got to commit. And if you use a silt strider or a boat to travel somewhere else in the world, you lose a bunch of time on the buff. So your range of travel is pretty limited. It is a good thing I learned about this shrine eventually because I think it'd be impossible otherwise to get to Ashir Badan without swimming at least a little bit. Or I'd need tons of levitate potions. Oh yeah, I sidetracked a bit. Remember the warlock ring Ajira wanted us to get? Ashir Badan is kind of close to Vivek and this blessing makes getting there real easy. Good thing I'm levitating, otherwise I'd have to jump into this water. So, Frost Atronachs aren't too tough to kill. Storm Atronachs, on the other hand... I'm gonna lure the mage out of the room and fight her first. The Atronach can't fit through the door, so this should simplify things. Vindamea Drethen has the ring we're looking for on her corpse. And that last name should sound familiar to you. There's the Drethen Ancestral Tomb up in the Sheagorad region of Vardenfell where you can get Marara's ring, a pretty decent ring if you can manage to kill the vampire that's holding it. The ring we get from Vindamea, however, is an on-use item, so we can't use it in this run, and it's not all that exciting to begin with anyway. These mages love storing scrolls and urns. Not that I'm complaining, more cash for me. So that's the last of Ajira's duties. Back to helping Edwina. And we're off once again to Nechulef Tinkth. 
Senilius is here in the Trulef Tinth with his daughter Pania, and he tells us he doesn't have an excavation report for Arduino. There have been some setbacks, of course, and their local guide, Anus Vendu, is probably not actually pronounced Anus, but it's spelled A-N-E-S, so it looks... He went missing. They lost their anus. <laughs> he took the notes for their report with him and disappeared in the lower levels of the ruins, so we gotta go find him. Or find his corpse. It'll be a corpse. It's always a corpse. Ugh, Skyrim's dungeon puzzles are so easy. All you do is turn a rock and match the shapes to open the door. An immaculate puzzle. Well, Anace is dead. Looks like he took out a drummer construct on his own, though. Good for him. I'll just take these notes from you real quick, thank you. After checking in with Senelius, he tells us to return the report to Edwina in honor of their deceased colleague. But I'm gonna return to her in honor of improving my standing with a guild because no one matters but me. I'm an island. To talk, I would... Now she wants me to find some blueprints. What kind of blueprints? Dwemer blueprints. Vague enough for you? She's not terribly specific, but she says we might be able to find them in Mizuleft, a Dwemer ruins just outside Dagenfell. Is the singular of ruins still ruins, or is Mizuleft a Dwemer ruin? Or do both work? A Dwemer ruins feels right, but a Dwemer ruin also seems right. Or is it like fish, where many of one kind of fish is fish, but multiple different kinds of fishes are fishes? Ah, eh, who cares, you know what I'm talking about. It's nice to not have to walk very far from town to get to where I gotta go. Hopefully, this place is relaxing and free of significant troubles. You will die. Oh, he just got the drop on me. I'll get him this time. Now, I missed. You die. Ooh, Give he's tanky. Up. The problem is, I can't run. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. What's this way? Ah, another maniac with an axe. Sounds about right. I should have gotten some absorb attribute spell or something. Over encumber enemies with absorb strength, maybe that would work. I wonder how strong the spell would have to be for it to be effective. It might not even be feasible. I think I just need to be lucky and hope he doesn't knock me over. If I can trade hits, I should survive. Orc's dead. Excellent. Looks like the blueprints are right here as well. Dwemer Scarab Plans. And there's a key here, probably to open up deeper parts of Mizu left. Escape while you can. Coward. Yowza. Coward. Die with honor. Power. Weakling. Jesus, two of you? Okay, new plan. Got your plan, Edwina. What's next? Miners in Nissus broke into the ruins of Bethemes. That's where Jesus was born. So I think NPCs say Nisus, but I personally prefer the repetition of Nissus with two short eyes. These are all fake words, so it doesn't even, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Someone in the comments did mention that it was weird that I was able to get Yagram Bagarn from the spelling of Yagram Bagarn. And looking at it now, I kind of get it. Like, wh how do I get yay from ya? But I, I just like the rhythm of Yagram Bagarn. It just, it's more fun sounding than Yagram Bagarn. So the Nissa's egg mine is locked and this dork over here won't give us the key. There are a few options available to us. Steal the key, kill him and loot the key, which is also stealing, or sweet talk him with speechcraft. We can't really do any of that. I mean, I could kill him, but that end up being a whole ordeal because he's an innocent person or whatever. There's also an underwater passageway leading into the mines, but swimming would level athletics, so that's a no-go. Another option is to join the Imperial Legion and walk right in. Darius No Last Name is conveniently here in Nissus and enlists us as a new recruit. We can now throw on the Imperial Chain Quiris he gave us, talk to Vitolia, and he'll hand over the key to the mine. Once we're in, we can desert the Legion and never bother talking to any of them ever again. In fact, we need to kill this guy right here before we can go any further into the caves, and I'm pretty sure he's part of the Legion, so if they find out what I did, they'd probably kick me out anyway. Oh, another level. More of the same, five willpower, one intelligence, one luck. And now we're in Bethemes. Divine Metaphysics. Neat. I can't read this. But we're here for the blueprints, which are right next to the book. Plans for an airship. Interesting. There's literally nothing else in this dungeon, so back to Edwina we go. 
By handing over these plans, we've now completed all of Edwina's tasks. There are some other mages who can give us some duties, but I'm actually just five mysticism levels away from ranking up to Master Wizard. We need 80 mysticism, so let's get to some spell spam. We could do some of Skinkin Tree's Shades duties while I cast spells. Escort this lady from the inn to the boat, barely an inconvenience. Get him a copy of Vampires of Vardenfell Volume 2. We can just buy that from Jobasha in Vivek's Foreign Quarter. But I got 80 on the way to his shop, so screw it, he can find his own book. Now that we're a Master Wizard, Edwina has one more task for us. She laments that the guild isn't led by somebody with my devotion to scholarship. She wants me to speak with Archmage Trebonius to help him see reason, to help him understand the values of scholarship. You see, a lot of the mages don't really like the Archmage. He's mostly there as like a political position. Dude sucks. When we speak with him, he sees our true intentions. A lust for power and prestige. To take his place as Archmage, we must defeat him in the Vivek Arena, in a duel to the death. I suppose the Mage's Guild isn't all that different from the Telvanni after all. His amulet is the true prize. A constant 25% normal weapons resistance, 25 points to intelligence, 1 health restored per second, and 25 points of spell absorption. Powerful indeed. And that's becoming an Archmage by leveling up only mysticism. And unarmored, but if you've made it this far, you, you know what I mean. As you can see, no XP in any skill except mysticism and unarmored. I only... When? What the... How did I get... How did I get four experience in alchemy? I didn't make any potions. Oh my god, eating ingredients can give experience. Vivek, just end me.